Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial here on the DJpodcast.com. In this video, we're going to look at how you can create a DJ mix inside of the arrangement view. Right now we're in the session view, but we want to get into the arrangement view. We can do this by simply selecting both of our clips, then clicking on them, pressing tab, and then dragging them into the arrangement timeline. Right now, I've got the two tracks stacked on top of each other, but that's not really what I want. I actually want to have the first track play, and then we are going to mix into the second one. To recreate kind of a sample mix, I'm going to move the second loop here to the 33rd bar. So now we're going to have the sample loop in audio one play and then we're going to mix in to the sample loop in audio two. Right now we have a pretty bare setup in Ableton Live. If we were just to play these, it would just play the first track and then it would play the second. There wouldn't be any sort of transition that you're used to hearing in a DJ mix. So what we're going to need to do is add in an EQ3 to both tracks. So you can simply go over into the live devices add an EQ3 to the first, and then add an EQ3 to the second. So now that we have an EQ3 on both channels, we've kind of recreated a DJ mixer inside of Ableton. But we want to automate all of those options. One thing that's really great about Ableton is that you can create automation lanes. And to do this, you can simply go over to the audio track that you want, and then you see it says right here in this drop down, none. We're going to click on this and then we're going to go to EQ3. Then below it, we have a secondary drop down and these give us all of the options for that particular effect. We're going to start by going to gain low and then pressing the plus sign underneath it. That adds the gain low option of the EQ3 as its own automation lane. We're also going to want to go back and do that for gain mid and if we go under Mixer, we can go to Track Volume and add that. So now we've got three different variables of our actual audio track that we can edit and automate and see all of the different parameters at the same time. Now, we've only done this for the first track, so we're going to need to go ahead and do this for the second track as well. Okay, so now you've got the track volume, the volume of the mids and lows for both tracks. But you can see here that we're kind of starting to run out of room on our screen. One thing that's nice is that you can actually change the size of the automation lane. Simply do that by going over to the gray line underneath the lane itself, and you can then click and drag to resize it. So we're going to add one more thing to our live set before we start going to actually automating the mix. And that is a compressor on the master channel. To do that, simply add a compressor by going into the live devices and then dragging it to the master channel. So here we have our compressor and we're gonna to wanna to make a couple of changes. What I'm gonna tell you are just some basic settings that you can add, but you really want to play with it and make sure that you get your settings correct. So for this example tutorial, I'm going to first take off makeup gain. Then I'm going to set the threshold to minus 15 dB. And I'm going to set the attack to something very fast. We'll just set it around uh, 0.42 milliseconds. And we'll leave it at that. Really, this is just to make sure that we're not clipping. So now we want to start actually automating our DJ mix. You need to think about how you mix while you're in front of a mixer and try and recreate that similar feel in an automation. Zoom in here a little bit to the part that we want to change. The first thing we're going to start with is adding a quick swap bass transition. So we're going to have our first track's bass cut out completely and then the second track's come in all the way right on the beat. So what we'll do is we will just use our 
pencil tool, also called draw mode, and we're going to find the, the halfway point, and then we're going to draw out the base. So what I'm doing here is making it so that we're at uh, minus infinity dB, which is essentially silent, and then it comes on at this point here, and the opposite is happening on the top. So there we've got a little bit of a quick swap with the bass. Let's just take a listen to how that sounds. Okay, so that's just a little sample of what we've got so far. Now let's move on to adjusting the mids. So what we'll do is we'll kind of pick a point here and if we can correct that for a second then we're going to add another point here near the end and bring it down about 5 db then find another point bring it down even further and then finally fade it all the way out then we're going to do that for the incoming track but this time we're going to work backwards we're going to set a point here at zero and then go towards the beginning of the track and bring it in Okay, so now we've faded in the mids. Finally, it's time to bring in the overall track volume. So we're going to put a point here, and this is at zero. And then we're going to add another point shortly after our base swap. Let's go, let's say, seven. Then again, we'll add another point, maybe around minus 14. And then finally, we will fade it out all the way to the end. When we work on audio channel two, as I did with the mids, we're gonna work our way backwards. So at this point, we want it to be at zero. Then we'll go a little bit behind the last midpoint, bring it down to say 10, then go even further, and finally, all the way down to nothing. You can see that right now we've got a pretty basic mix. It has a quick bass swap, 16 bars in, which is about halfway. We've got a subtle mid transition, and our overall volume for one track goes down as the other comes up. So let's take a listen now to how this whole thing sounds. <laughs> 